Hi! In this video tutorial, number six, we're going to make a keyboard input in Max. When last we learned the big secret, um, we made a noise maker, and that's one of the things that Max is really good at, synthesis and the manipulation of sound. So we're going to save this. I'm going to save this for later as patcher cycle read and open up a new patcher because what we want to make now is a keyboard input. Um, and when I say keyboard, I mean using our computer's keyboard to act as though it were a musical input or some sort of musical keyboard. So let's get started on that and we will type the letter N and type in it key and that's what we want double click on it it's the key and you may recall again from the big secret our newfound laziness we're just going to hold down the option key and click on key and look at that we get it complete with instructions and number boxes and everything. So let's unlock this, help file, select the things we want, which I think are these things right here. We'll copy them, we'll close the file, get rid of that, just hit the delete key and paste it in. While they're all selected, you can grab them and move them up to the top. Now, having done this before, I figured out that there's a good way to um, convert keystrokes into musical notes and I will show you that momentarily but uh, let's lock this patcher down for a moment and then just run your hands across your keyboard in some way this is A 97 W is 119 S is 115 they're almost seemingly random now let's take a look at something else. We'll go over here and type the word slider. And down here in sliders, we have the K slider. And as you can see, again, it looks like musical notes. So we're going to go with that and pull one of those over here. Whoops. Hello. Unlock your patcher and pull it over there again. There we go. K slider. Okay, um, we can stick a, a number box on the bottom of that type I and you get a number box and just put that underneath it. Actually type I again and put another number box on the other side. Over there, see that other outlet? Great. So connect those up and lock your patcher and we'll just press on the key that's 36 that's the key number and 21 over here is the velocity the way it works is the higher on the key you go the higher the velocity 117 is pretty high on MIDI and 9 is quite low so this is uh, let's see let's pick a key up here that's key number 60 key number 48 that makes sense there's 12 semitones in an octave 48 to 60 so they go quite in order. So what we want to do is convert our computer keys somehow to these musical key numbers so that we can have consistent information in our patch. In order to do that, there's a little trick that we can use, which is this. Uh, unlock your patcher and letter N for a new object. And let's get the print box out there, OK? And let's connect the print box to this ASCII output. If you hover around here, that's the ASCII code coming out, platform specific. I don't want it to change between one computer and the other, so I'm not going to use that. Um, modifier keys, not important at the moment, but it's useful to know platform independent keyboard. I guess that would work for all platforms, but um, ASCII is pretty universal, so I'm going to stick with the ASCII and it's going to print. 
whatever it is that comes out of there. And then we're going to go over here to the max window and open it up. If you have anything in here, errors or other things, just clear them by clicking this down here and you're in good shape. Okay, now anything that we type in there, try typing on your keys. I'm sorry, lock your lock your patcher and try typing on your keys and you can see that it comes up in the print window. Clear the print window again and now let's think about it. We want to start on the letter C and if I make that an A on my computer keyboard then I probably want to make this one in a similar place which would be a W. So I'm going to type a W S E D there's no black note so I'm gonna skip R and go to F are you looking down at your keys T G Y H U J and K. Now we got a whole octave in there. Fantastic. Don't type on any other keys. You'll see why uh, if you look over here. So in order to not type on any more keys, I'm going to come over here and unlock my patcher. Come on, patcher. Unlock. There we go. And delete that patch so that the print doesn't work. Okay. Now we're going to I'll just save that print for later if I need it. Let's make another new object. And this object is select. There it is. Not the one with the tilde, but just a plain old select. And then let's click inside here. When it's highlight, don't hit space. You want to get the cursor line. Come on. So space it's really acting up here space and then we're gonna type this list 97 119 115 101 100 102 116 103, 121, 104, 117, 106, and 107. Fantastic. And what we'll do is run the output of this over here to select. Then since we associated these numbers with the keys that we're typing, um, when we push in A, we're going to get a 97. When we push a W, we're going to get a 119. When we push a S, we're going to get 115, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's our that's our ultimate goal. And now we're going to do something a little wacky. We could just put messages under here that. Um, that uh, feed in here but we also want to have a volume control so what I'm going to do is type an M for a message and just for the moment I'm going to type 100 okay just so we can see the message box okay and I'm going to duplicate one of these for each I think that's 12 notes, right? Or is it 13 when you get done? We'll see. Okay. Option click. Uh, option click. Option click. Then you can grab the whole group of them and say option click and drag to duplicate. Option click and drag to duplicate. And let's see how we're doing here. We can stretch this out so that Okay, so now connect one, 
to the left-hand inlet. It has to be the left-hand inlet. That is important. Because what select does is it sends out a bang whenever it gets those numbers. I wish that was adjustable, but it's not. But it does send them out the right outlet, and that will be useful to us in a little bit. Let's try to get this done here as quickly as possible. Right. So, so we need one more because there are There's an extra outlet on here that puts out a bang if you don't hit any of these keys. So let's um, just hit the letter B and connect this so that we can see it. Okay. And now let's put a number box in here type the letter I for integer and then take the using our fantastic trick actually this is another kind of odd trick put the number box up here and drag a line down to the first one's left hand inlet now we're going to use the shift trick again so get that blue ring to light up let's uh, zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing get that blue ring to light up, push the shift key, and then just go click, blue, 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 right? All the way across. The only thing that you have to remember is to let go of the shift key before you get to the last one. There we go. And then we drag this back down and it will sort of neaten things up. It's, it's hard to keep all your max patch neat, but there are ways. There are ways. So let's zoom back out here and um, just do a quick test. I'm going to put another button at the other end here where we think A is going to function. And let's lock our patcher and test it here. So now we hit A. Look at that. And this one gets a bang and that will bang 100 out here. And if we hit something that isn't included in this number list, like let's say the letter M, the other one does N, the other one does A, back there. We don't have any buttons on these, so we can't test them, but let's assume they're working for the moment. Unlock the patcher again, and now we're going to try another object. And it is called type M not M. M is a message box. Delete. Oh, I can't delete it. There we go. Get out of here, message box. Type N and then type funnel. We had 13 inputs, did we not? And we're going to try an offset of 40. Do you see down here it says offset? Okay, so what does what does funnel do? Funnel has all these inputs on the top of it, depending on how many you select. And what happens is whatever number comes in, it pairs it with the number of the inlet. So if this 100 comes in this inlet, let's connect them while we're talking about it, it's going to come out the other end as 1, 100. This one will come out as 2, 100. So we know where they're coming from. This one will come out as 3, 100. This will come out as 4, 100, at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, they won't because we pushed an offset on there. So actually, Right. trying to do two things at the same time. This one will come out as 1, 100. No, it won't. It'll come out as 41, 100. Let's make another 
message box and test our theory here. Run it in the right hand outlet and it resets the message in a message box. Okay, so let's lock our patcher down and type A. 40, 100. 41, 100. So this really comes out as 0 plus 40. This one will come out as 1 plus 40. This one will come out as 2 plus 40. Okay. What happens if we, uh, and, and also the 100 as well. So now we want to run that into our keyboard here. We can do that. Um, the, the keyboard down here has an inlet over here which um, shows you what values it receives. It also has a va uh, an input over here for velocity. You can send them both in the left hand outlet but for the sake of educational experience let's make a new object called unpack and then type a zero and another zero. The zeros just tell it that it's going to unpack two different numbers. If I unpacked, if I wanted this to be able to process decimal fractions, I'd put 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0, or it doesn't matter what you put. If it has a decimal point in it, it'll do floating points, but we don't care about that today. So now we'll connect them. And this one goes over to this side. And this one goes over to this side. And with any luck at all, they'll end up being going the right way. So let's see what we get here. A, oh, lock your patcher and type A. 40, 100, it works perfectly. S should be 42. Yes. Uh, K should be 40 plus 12. 52. Fantastic. My goodness, it works. So that's how to do a um, keyboard input for, uh, for Max. And in our next tutorial, we'll figure out how to encapsulate this and give it some output so that we don't have to look at the whole thing and also how to put some controls on it. But for now, let's keep these videos manageable. So patch well, make this work, and I will be back with the next video. Thank you.